Summertime is here and what are we talking about? Outdoor cooking. We're gonna go back through some of our favorite all-time grilling recipes. First up in the top five it is hot dogs. Now, I'm not talking just any old hot dog. I'm talking about the All-American Burger Dog. Why would you want to cook the All-American Burger Dog? Well, everybody grills burgers. Everybody grills hot dogs. Why won't you combine the two together to make it the best eating sensation you've ever had in your life? But you need some 80-20 ground beef. I love to use certified Angus beef. Roll it out to at least one-eighth of an inch thick. You want to make sure that it cooks throughout you do. Do this by placing it in a baggie. Do not use the dreaded saran wrap. You need to have you some of this stuff that I really hate to use, especially when it's out in the wind, because y'all know what's happened. Y'all have <laughs> seen it before, and it just happens. I don't know why it happens, but every time you get it out, the wind gets up to at least 65, so we're going to tear us off a great big piece. I hope y'all can hear, folks, because this is not as funny as it appears to be for me. There we go. There's another one bit of bullet it has. One husband controller, rolling pin. So you need to grill that hot dog first because we want to lock in all that flavor that you're going to get from that grill and then bring it over there and lay that roasted chili right down on that big old half a pound of beef. Roll it all up. Now, if I was going to do this over again, I would have went ahead and put me a whole bunch of pepper jack cheese in there. Make it all on the inside, not just on the outside. Get it over there on the fire. Folks, it don't take but about three to five minutes to cook this deal. You could even substitute if you want a hot link in there. There is always to change this recipe up. We are gonna look at there. Ooh la la, that's what I am after. And I am fitting to have me a bite. No, I'm not as hot. <laughs> So in the same category as the All-American Burger Dog, I think we should throw in the what? The classic, the Chili Cheese Dog. How many of them you ordered from Sonic? Or how many of you have been at some place where they just put that can of Wolf brand chili right down the top and you're looking the best that you can be? Got your white shirt on, your wife's got her little white shorts on, the first thing you hear is, oh my God, you done got it all over you because the chili was not thick enough to stay on the bun and the hot dog. The thickening agent we are using today comes from the folks in Wisconsin. Yep, y'all know what it is now, don't you? Cheese. Woo! Colby Jack, freshly shredded. Cheese will bind things together, but to seal the bottom of the bun, because when you put this all together and you go to take a bite and you squeeze it a little, the bottom splits out. So you gotta seal it up. Get your five pounds of concrete, layer down in there just right. No more cheese. Put them things on the grill, lay that cheese in there, let it toast to where it melts down in there really good. You have created a barrier now that no chili can pass through. Cover it back up with that chili that's got cheese in it and then cover it with cheese one more time. What have you got? A chili cheese dog that you can hold up just like this and the chili will not run out. And it's you, not drippy. It's like go, those, uh, it's like the blizzards they serve upside down. Well, I ain't gonna turn it upside down. That's asking a little much, Shannon. <laughs> we be, you put this dog on the Ferris wheel. Yeah, I mean, he'll go around. My number two on the list is what? Burger. But I'm not talking about any kind of burger. I'm talking about a brisket burger. Folks, there's so much more of a great flavor that you can find in this. In a way, I would compare it to Kobe and Wagyu ground beef because it has that richness that that flat of that brisket is going to bring out to you. You're going to cut that up in little one inch cubes and you're going to grind it. Now, if you have a meat grinder, be sure that you take that grinding disc out of it. You put that in the freezer about an hour ahead of time and you freeze that thing really well because when that's cold and you're grinding that beef, it'll flow through there a whole lot easier. We need to go ahead and form these into a patty, folks, and then let them chill again while we get the fire ready and do some other things to where they stay together better. Now, I, if you're gonna do this, grind them fresh like that, and then you're gonna think I'm gonna do them right now. No, put them in the ice box, either let this grind meat that you have, grind meat. Ooh, the grinder, ooh, the monkey grind. What's that guy's name, you know? The mo he had a little grinder that played music. It's just a monkey. I don't think he had a name. I thought he had a name. Yeah, I thought he was somebody real important. <laughs> I, I did. 
If you want to cheapen this recipe up a little to go with that brisket burger, instead of just using all brisket, get you a brisket flat and then get you a pound of pork sausage. And now when you get all that meat ground together from the brisket, then go ahead and mix that sausage back in there by hand. You have a richer fat content that's gonna come about from the pork too. Now, when you bring them out there and cook them, we're not cooking this very long, folks. Two to three minutes on each side, it's all it's gonna take because we want this to come out more closer to a medium rare than a medium. Toast them buns up, lay that crispy bacon on there, put that special sauce on there, and what you got? A brisket burger that is ooh, so tasty. So if you wanna up your burger game and make it more tasteful, the brisket burger is your number one choice. Mage is saying, I'm, I'm right here and I'm waiting cause that is a plenty big burger. Dad can't hold all that. He's gonna stumble and fall and I'm gonna get it. Come on, there you go. Big, you always know what's happening, my friend. You one of the best there is. The little mage and Duker, you get the biggest bite of all because Dang. you're the sweetest. Next up, and where are all my Okies at? Hey, this is what we're talking about, the Oklahoma Fried Onion Burger. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plains. Folks, you gotta have the right kind of onion. That's a yellow onion or a white onion. I prefer a Vidalia onion, but so many people, when they make them, they just cut them onions really thin and then they go to making it. No, you gotta make them perspire. You gotta make them sweat. Get out there and give them some exercise. You just take one of them mandolins. Be careful with them little slicers. They'll get all your fingers cut off if you ain't careful. Put them in a colander, get you some good salt, sprinkle all over the top of them, put them in something that they can drain and they're gonna sweat. I mean, more than Richard Simmons did. I mean, them onions is gonna be dripping that moisture out of them, and that's what it's talking about. I just need you to make them about the size of a small baseball, wouldn't you say? I would say I would that call, was- I would call that a really well, large golf ball. Okay, well in Pee Wee's, when I was coaching Pee Wee ball, this is pretty close to about the same kind really? of ball. Yeah, about bad. Put them burgers in there, and then you get something to mash it. Not your boot heel, not something. I mean, a spatula or a skillet, but a lot of times when you mash that, folks, and then you pick it up, the meat's gone. Look under the skillet or the deal. It's better if you'll put a piece of wax paper down there. You've heard me say it many times, don't mash your burger. That's when we're just grilling burgers on the grill because we're mashing all that juice out of them. When we got this onion burger, we gotta flatten that to where we can get all that flavor from that meat to ease up through them onions, and then when you turn it over, oh my gosh, you get that flavor again. But when you get them turned over and make sure that you have a spatula that is big enough to get under there. And then folks, get that bun, lay it right there, the heel of that bun on that burger there on top. Let that good onion steam and juice come up through that bun to penetrate that thing. And then get ready to put the cheese on them, get ready to serve it. Cause oh my gosh, we're talking about a tradition in Oklahoma that should be known nationwide. Yeah, Oklahoma's known for a lot of things, but down here in our part of the state, it's known for, hey, you might be a dab breezy, but Oklahoma, where the burgers come blowing down the plains. <laughs> they would today, wouldn't they, Shan? Be sure and give us a thumbs up, a like on this video. It helps our channel grow, it does, and we'd appreciate it so much. But hey, this Memorial Weekend, what are y'all throwing on the grill? Is it one of these recipes, something different? Let me know because I want to see what everybody else is throwing on that grill to get some of that smoke and that fire on. Running around the corner at number three, what is it? One of my most favorite delicate dishes ever that I mean you set on the table at any time of year, smoked bologna. When I was a small child, we did eat a lot of bologna at my house. And my daddy always called it red rind steak. Big says, I smell something good. Got some tail wagging going on there, Big. Now, there are certain things that you can do to this to even make this better. And we have a lot of stuff that is missing, as always, when we film. It's gotta be all beef bologna. Don't be buying that stuff that says made with chicken, pork, turkey, tennis shoes, anything else like that. And I am gonna just take my knife and run in there about that deep. And then I'm gonna come right over here 
and I'm going to cut me a V cross section out of this bologna where it looks about like that. All the jalapenos and the honey that just drizzled down through that because you're going to split it and make a trough to hold in all that goodness. My favorite piece of it is the one that's right on the end. Slice that off because you got some of that char that's right there on it. But don't quit at the smoked bologna. No, I'm talking about we take that bologna to another level on a smoked fried bologna sandwich. Made with beef, pork, and chicken. How did they get all them animals in this little package? Don't buy the stuff in the package. Go to the deli section of the store and tell them, I want some bologna. I want the bologna sliced here. Lay it on out there in that smoker. Let it get some of that great flavor that that fruit wood's going to bring to it and then throw it in a hot skillet. But before you do, because my mother taught me this trick, the first piece of bologna I ever fried in my life, cut the corners a little to keep that bologna from curling and cupping up. You'll never eat bologna again just right out of the package. You'll either want it smoked or you'll want it smoked and fried. Hang on, we have trouble in paradise. <laughs> He's about to get the cheap bologna. Let me, gotta make this a little bigger. What are you doing? You could have a bologna face mask. To where you just no, no? Uh -uh. that's going in the outtake. <laughs> Coming in at number four, what is it? Pork chop. Well, the star of the show is here, and I just want to pick this. Did you this. mean the beak? Well, pretty close. <laughs> now I want to pick this up so y'all can see how thick that rascal is. A 16 ounce bone in center cut pork chop. Now a lot of people cook them. They do but they end up dry. And you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to cook these no more because why spend this, which really isn't much, it's very inexpensive to cook a bunch of pork chops and they dry out. So folks, what are we talking about? A dry brine. Really infusing flavor in them with the brine, but also making them more tender. Takes you 24 hours. So if you're going to do this, make sure you've got 24 hours ahead of time. You season that really well with salt and some seasoning. Place it on a wire rack. Put it in the ice box. 12 hours, flip it over. Then you're ready to go. Let it come to room temperature the next day before you bring it out here to the grill. And folks, what it is is really reverse osmosis. That salt and everything is pulling the moisture out. And as it sits up there on top, then it gets to incorporate and rain back through that pork chop with liquid flavor it does. Meat hits a fire and the muscles begin to tense and they pull. Things will try to curl up a little bit at a time. So just take your knife and just slice right through that fat if it's got very much on there. And that way, we ain't gonna have no curling up. I don't think that one's got enough to make no difference. We'll give this one a little pinch right here. So no matter what kind of pork you're putting on the grill, if it is of the pig nature, I like to pair it with a good fruit wood. I love to use cherry, I love to use apple, but I'm gonna mix that usually with a little oak or a little mesquite. Put them on the indirect side of the fire, cook them till they get about 140, and then throw them over here on the hot side and let's get some color, get them up to about 160. Lather some of that good Red River Ranch barbecue mud on there, get a knife and a fork, call me and bring a whole pound of napkins. Now you want a great insurance policy to take out to make sure that your pork chop ain't dry. This dry bind method will work ooh, oh so well. Coming up at number five, what are we talking about? A great appetizer, but a meal as well a grilled honey chipotle shrimp. Makes my mouth water just to think about them because we're gonna marinate these shrimp at least 12 hours. Now you mix all this honey and this chipotle and everything up together and got that seasoning, put them in a bag, rub them around with oil, put them in an ice box and leave them alone. But don't buy these shrimp, the ones that you go fishing with. Buy them big old jumbo shrimp. And if you can find some of them big prawns, buy them. If you're using one of them wooden skewers that you're gonna poke down through there, hey, make sure that you soak them. But get you some of these here. Skewer sticks, I think is what you call them. They're really long toothpicks for people with a large mouth. Soak them. I like to soak them a good 45 minutes or an hour because if you don't, you know what's gonna happen? What can't, what will happen? You will have 
nothing left of these and them little shrimps is hard to pick up and roll around. I love to use a stainless steel because I really think they're the best and if you've got a lot of them to do and you've got a lot of them skewers laying out there on the grill and you reach to go turn them over and you know and they don't they just roll. Take you two of them and pin them shrimp all the way through but when you're running that skewer through there don't push them to where you're wrinkling that shrimp up to where he's like that. Keep him stretched out Biggest thing that really people have problem with with shrimp, and it is what? Overcooking. I've warmed up a little, but I'm going to lay them right over here and let them warm just a little more before we kick them down there on that end. So we're just letting her slow down just a little before we go back over here on the hot side. You just want them to have, I think the fancy word is an opaque what does that mean? Sort of maybe a translucent pink. Get them off the grill before they get too pink because it don't take long to cook some shrimp got a little spice a little heat and a little sweet oh my goodness we're gonna put all the seafood restaurants out of business if only my water hole was full of shrimp that so we hope you have the greatest grilling time of all and kick it off on this memorial day weekend but let's not forget really what memorial day weekend is all about while you're out there tending the fires and the flames to manage that stuff that you got on that grill let's remember those you know the ones we always think every video the service men, the service women, all the veterans. But folks, let's also remember those who paid the ultimate price, the sacrifice, that we might have the freedoms to do what we do today, to stand in a backyard and gather family around a fire and share stories and food. Well, we thank you so much for watching our videos, but I'd like to leave you with this. We all make a difference in our actions, whether it be just a handshake to a stranger, maybe you open the door at a restaurant for someone you didn't even know, or maybe you just wave to some fella that's walking down the street. So, as Mr. Rogers said, be the best neighbor that you can be, and always give everybody a hand up. I can't clap loud, I have a sore on my hand. Oh. Look, right here. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in to see it because it's so small. I nearly had to go to critical care.